an army colonel's life and career were entirely destroyed when a woman accused him of violating her. Since then, a judge has made a decision in the case. The audience was left in disbelief when the verdict was announced in court, with several people gasping at the contentious conclusion. A 52-year-old Everett, Washington, blogger named Susan Shannon made grave allegations against U.S. Army Colonel David Will Riggins in a blog post. The blog reported that Shannon had accused Riggins of sexually abusing her in 1986 when they were both students at New York's West Point, the United States Military Academy. She said that after a party where she had been intoxicated, Riggins had sexually assaulted her while driving her home. Shannon claimed that when she passed out in the car, Riggins had intercourse with her unconscious body. She claimed that soon after the incident, she left West Point. But Riggins continued on to have a prosperous military career, rising to the rank of colonel. Shannon added that she chose to keep quiet at the time about the alleged attack because of the Army's code of silence. She stated that she was prevented from reporting the alleged violating even during her exit interview because of pressure from other troops in the military to remain silent or not to speak out, but she chose to come clean about her secret nearly 30 years later. Shannon clarified that she was motivated to come forward by news of multiple high-profile convictions for sexual assault by members of the military. Shannon told her account on her blog, Short Little Rebel, and publicly identified Riggins as her claimed criminal, choosing not to report the incident to the police. Her post was timed to provoke controversy because it was published soon after Riggins received a big promotion nomination. Shannon said that she was unaware of Riggins' candidacy when she published the blog and that she found out about it only after being approached by army officials who were looking into her allegations. The charges quickly overturned Riggins' fruitful military career. The Alexandrian combat veteran, who had seen duty in both Afghanistan and Iraq, was about to receive a promotion to brigadier general, but as soon as army officials learned of Shannon's blog post accusing him of violating her, they revoked his promotion. The Daily Mail claims that after Riggins' name was linked to the grave charges, which he angrily denied, his reputation was swiftly damaged. Susan Shannon was not violated by me. Susan Shannon was not sexually assaulted by me. Her story is completely untrue, Riggins said. After looking over the matter, the military came to the conclusion that Riggins could not be charged with violating since there was not enough evidence, but the harm was already done. He was forced into retirement because his military career had been virtually wrecked. Riggins made the decision to fight back after the accusations put an end to his career. He said that Shannon had posted the false accusations on her blog, acting as judge and jury, and he was not going to allow her to ruin his life. Consequently, Army Colonel Will Riggins filed a defamation lawsuit against Susan Shannon, stating that her charges prevented him from being promoted. According to the Washington Post, the court decided in favor of Riggins and ordered Shannon to pay $8, for million in damages total, $3, for million in compensatory damages for lost wages and reputational loss, and $5 million in punitive damages to stop similar incidents in the future. Shannon was obviously disappointed with the result. I feel like I'm a financial slave for the rest of my life, she stated. I told the truth in my article and at trial, but the jury which was made up of three men and four women, couldn't agree, one juror commented, the colonel made his case, and he was believable, indicating that they thought the case was simple, however, they thought Shannon was less trustworthy, to be honest, we believed it was clear who was speaking the truth, the jury member said, we had a vote, and everyone thought the colonel was right, the amount of damages was the only topic of discussion. Although praising the jury for their decision to provide him a second chance, Riggins noted that nothing could ever fully make up for the suffering his family had to go through, referring to the protracted legal procedure as a nightmare. He clarified that the big cash prize wasn't the main point of interest, I just wanted the opportunity to be proved right, to clear my name, and to do everything in my power to repair my reputation. It is imperative that people recognize the worth of a good reputation, Defamation attorney Tom Clare, who has handled cases similar to this one, emphasized the enormous influence that a single blog post or tweet may have in today's internet-driven society. He stated, false information can spread globally in an instant, and juries are now willing to grant significant damages in these kinds of situations. Many of our clients merely want their reputations restored, really. All they want is for the lies to be publicly confirmed. After watching the first story above, 
Do you have any thoughts? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments section. Now, let's watch another similar story. Vernon inhaled in the familiar air of his birthplace and experienced a rush of excitement as the cab wound through streets that brought back memories. His exhilaration grew with each landmark he passed, and the relief of finally being home was nearly unbearable. Vernon's heart puffed with excitement as the cab pulled onto his street. A sense of childish joy seized him at the prospect of his well-manicured lawn and his own bed. He had been waiting for this day. However, Vernon was unaware of what awaited him. What met his eyes as he got out of the taxi was colder than the comforts of a clean house and a steaming cup of coffee. Vernon was familiar with soldier life having grown up in a military family. The military played a significant role in his family's history because his father, grandfather, and other cousins were all veterans, his decision to enlist in the Marines at the age of 25 felt like a logical continuation of that illustrious heritage because of his background, his family was fully in favor of his decision, after starting his service in the United States, Vernon went to Afghanistan, he had eagerly anticipated his return day, hoping to escape the chaos and violence he had seen. A simpler existence away from the tumult of war was what he dreamed of, thank goodness, he had saved enough money and received military subsidies to buy a modest house that stood for the peaceful future he had battled so hard to achieve. Vernon dreamed of having a long, hot bath and a stack of fluffy pancakes for breakfast, a delight he hadn't had in more than a year. During the drive from the airport, he felt warm and comforted just thinking about it. During the trip, the tranquil streets and well-kept lawns served as a comforting sight after the chaos of his deployment. As he peered out the window, but the instant he got out of the taxi, his relief gave way to uneasiness. It was strange that his lawn was so overgrown and neglected considering he had employed outside contractors to take care of the property while he was away. His head reeled at the whole breadth of what had happened as he approached the house. The windows were broken, the front door was ajar, the once tidy lawn was overgrown, and the yard was covered in debris, as he put his luggage down. He realized how much of a mess lay for him, and his heart fell. Vernon moved carefully and with a sense of readiness, bracing himself for any unanticipated events, he moved cautiously to the front door, very aware of any possible threats that might be hiding inside his house. Trash bags and furniture were strewn all over the lawn as he looked around the backyard, approaching the front door. His heart raced as he reached for the spare key concealed beneath the flower pot only to discover it was gone, this worrying finding supported his worries that something was seriously amiss, Vernon pushed the door open carefully, not knowing what might be within and with a nervous breath, as soon as he entered, an unpleasant smell hit him, making him feel even more uneasy, his greatest worries came true very soon, the living room was completely disorganized, with furniture on top of one other, personal items strewn all over the floor and graffiti covering the spotless walls where priceless family portraits had once been hanging, his haven had been breached, Vernon was devastated, his hope of coming home to a stable and peaceful environment after his arduous deployment to Afghanistan was dashed in front of him, it was painfully obvious that squatters had taken over his house, it was hard to take the idea that outsiders had found the opening and exploited the circumstances, this place of privacy. The house he had saved so much money for, had been broken into and looted, his feelings fluctuated between powerlessness and rage, Vernon made the cautious but frustrated decision to go outside and gather his thoughts, he decided to locate a temporary location to stay and come back later to confront the squatters when they returned because they were not present, he phoned his parents, who kindly offered him a place to stay, in search of safety. Their assistance was a tiny solace in the middle of the devastation, the reality of the issue struck Vernon as he sat in their living room, he needed a strategy to get back his house, in an attempt to defuse the situation, he made the decision to come back early the following day and request that the squatters depart amicably, he had recently returned from military service, so the last thing he needed was to become involved in a fight. Vernon got up early the following morning and drove directly to his home, he walked into the rear and saw a couple, dressed shabbily, eating breakfast informally on the deck, as though they owned the property, Vernon felt his temper flare, but he forced himself to remain composed, he inhaled deeply, moved toward the couple, and spoke to them in a composed manner, oh, please, I have no idea who you are, but I am the legal owner of this house, and I demand that you vacate it, without delay. Unfazed, the man glanced up and grinned, is this your house, looks like we've made this our permanent home, dude, the proverbial finder's keepers, 
Despite the mounting frustration within him, Vernon managed to maintain his cool, this house is rightfully mine, I've just come back after serving my nation, kindly depart in a calm manner, the woman crossed her arms in a rebellious gesture as she sank back into her chair, all other options have been exhausted, no leaving for us. As Vernon struggled to maintain his composure, he tightened his hands and his voice became more rigid, you have no right to see someone's residence, this feels wrong. The guy got to his feet and moved closer to Vernon. We are not leaving, listen, young soldier, like you, we are well within our rights to be here. Vernon's tolerance was beginning to erode, this land belongs to me, please vacate the premises immediately, otherwise, I will contact the authorities. A possible intervention from the authorities, he thought, would jolt the pair into rationality, however, the man's laughter caught him off guard, you are free to do as you like, military lad we will remain in this location, when Vernon finally snapped and contacted the police, he was expecting they would intervene and assist him get a handle on the problem, he was expecting the police to respond quickly after he described the experience in detail when they arrived, what followed, however, was unexpected, claiming to have rented the residence, the squatters produced paperwork to support their claim, these papers seem legitimate, one of the cops replied after reviewing the paperwork, much to Vernon's dismay, no amount of coercion will make them go, Vernon's annoyance transformed into astonishment and fury, my house is right here, his voice quivered with emotion as he adamantly denied ever leasing it to anyone, shaking his head, the cop let out a heavy sigh, nothing can be done until we have concrete proof to the contrary, the courts will have to hear this case, Vernon felt his heart sink as the officers departed, things were becoming worse, and he appeared to still have a long way to go before he could reclaim his home, in the midst of his wrath and despair, Vernon stood there, how was this even possible, considering everything he had given up for his nation, it was nearly intolerable how unfair the situation was. A crushing combination of wrath and loss burdened him as he made his way back to his parents' house, the theft of his home, his haven, and the apparent failure of the institution he had battled to defend were both deeply troubling, Vernon, intent on retaliation, contacted an attorney with expertise in property issues, he went into great depth about his predicament, outlining the squatter's false lease and providing evidence of ownership, if the court could grant him any respite. Vernon would be grateful, but his dreams were dashed when the attorney laid out the protracted legal procedure, cautioning that the system's backlog may cause months to pass before he could retrieve the house, it was a crushing letdown, Vernon, who was feeling down, went to a tavern to get his thoughts straight, the low lighting and soft murmur of discussion offered him a moment's respite from the tension he was carrying around. He was sipping his drink and daydreaming when he noticed a familiar face, it was Jake, a former high school buddy that Vernon hadn't seen in a long time, Jake noticed him and grinned as he approached, Vernon, are you there, long time, no see, Vernon welcomed the diversion and told Jake all about his experience, including the bogus lease, the invasion of his house, and the excruciatingly sluggish court system. Jake shook his head in shock as he listened. Jake, who was now a member of a nearby biker gang, moved closer and whispered, Vernon, sometimes the legal system just isn't up to grade, perhaps making a show of force could get those squatters to leave, Vernon scowled as he considered the idea, Jake, I don't want to make things worse. I've seen enough combat in the armed forces, all I desire is a life that is quiet and serene, however, I also can't do nothing except sit here. Jake gave a shrug, consider it, dude, we don't need to resort to violence, we could just approach them, strike up a conversation, and cause them discomfort, they may become frightened and flee before anything violent happens, nobody enjoys working with gangs, Vernon thought about Jake's suggestion for a few days he had always felt that the proper course of action should be taken, but now that there didn't seem to be a quick fix. He found himself caught between his moral convictions and his mounting desperation, Vernon's patience grew thin and his moral compass became hazy as he considered the squatters occupying his residence, after days of mental turmoil, he finally decided to give Jake's scheme a shot because his desperation had started to override his normal principles, however, it would just be a calm discussion. Setting up a time for the group to meet at his residence, Vernon called Jake. The strategy was straightforward, speak with the squatters and threaten to have them leave, but do not engage in physical conflict, the squatters were soon driven out of the house when they saw the bikers assembled on the front lawn when they arrived, Vernon stepped up to the couple after taking a big breath, listen, just for the final time, I ask that you depart quietly, 
I want my home back, because this is it, with a snarl, the man gave him a full body check, you brought your motorcycle club. I see, do you believe that will frighten us, we have no intention of leaving, with her arms folded, the woman gave Vernon a glare, yes, please come as many strong men as you like, we're not moving, Vernon felt his temper flare up, but he controlled it, I don't want to become physical, you see, all I want is my home back, you're intruding, the man laughed sarcastically, violating the law, we have the lease documents to verify that we have been residents for several months. We now call this place home, Vernon balled his fists and struggled to maintain a steady tone in his voice, it is not your place to be here, I own this land, please go before things go out of control, I beg you, Vernon had believed that the motorcyclist's presence along with his cool-headed persistence would be sufficient to persuade the squatters, but instead of backing down, they replied by denouncing him, his heart fell, it was obvious they were not going to back down. Contrary to his belief that this display of power may tilt the scales, Vernon turned to Jake and shook his head, my abilities are inadequate for this task, I refuse to resort to violence in order to evict them, with a nod, Jake acknowledged Vernon's choice, very well, dude, it was our best effort, please don't hesitate to contact us at any time, Vernon felt a mixture of relief and annoyance as the motorcycles rode away, despite his unwavering commitment to his values. He remained unable to reach his home, Vernon realized he needed a fresh approach upon returning to his parents' residence, he was quite adamant about protecting the home he had spent all of his savings on, he remained up late that night thinking of a strategy, Vernon devoted the following several days to formulating plans to remove the squatters from the property without involving the authorities, he couldn't afford to wait months for a legal battle. And the police had previously declined to help, he was hellbent on finding a way out of his predicament, no matter how challenging it was, he was looking for a way out of the sticky situation that wouldn't involve fighting or going to court, as Vernon considered his alternatives. He thought of many different situations and analyzed the pros and cons of each, the days passed into the nights. A newfound optimism and resolve were sparked by a revelation that struck him one day, being a soldier. He was hell-bent on following the rules, but it didn't stop him from showing the squatters what they were missing, he informed Jake of the idea and requested that they meet at the pet store in a flash. Vernon bought a number of stink bug containers from the business after experiencing their strong odor in Afghanistan. He next made his way to the hardware store, where he stocked up on necessary equipment, the stakes were too high, and he knew he would need support if things went wrong. So he instructed Jake to contact his biker mates, staking out in front of the house that night, Vernon, Jake, and a handful of Jake's motorcycling buddies watched the squatters every move, waiting for the perfect opportunity to carry out their plot, in the course of the evening, the squatters made their camp for the night, following his military training. Vernon and his crew maneuvered discreetly to position themselves around the residence, when everyone was ready. They started letting the stink bugs out via the cracks and windows, the house was soon filled with the overwhelming smell of the insects as they spread rapidly, they needed to get back to their cars and wait for the stink bugs to do their job, while waiting for the odor to permeate the entire house, Vernon and his crew departed from the scene, things were ready to go when the sun came up. The squatters were roused from their slumber by the putrid smell first thing in the morning. And they staggered out of the house, coughing and covering their noses, from a distance, Vernon felt a rush of joy as his plan went out without a hitch, while Vernon and his team hid, watching every move, the squatters desperately dialed for pest control since the smell was too much for them, seeing the squatters misery brought him a somber feeling of justification, after taking stock of the situation. The pest control crew advised the squatters that they would have to leave the property for at least one night so the chemicals could work. Vernon had anticipated this outcome with great anticipation, as he observed the squatters take a suitcase and hail a cab, his heart pounded with anticipation, with a rush of excitement, he leaped into action, hello, I'm the owner of this house, here to make some repairs, he said as he walked up to the pest control crew, kindly carry on with your work. He spoke in a steady, authoritative tone, the exterminators nodded and went back to work, in the meantime, Jake and his group put on masks and set to work, working fast and methodically to fix the damaged door, replace all the locks, and secure every potential point of access, Vernon gave precise instructions to his staff, making sure that no aspect was missed, they sealed off any openings the squatters might use to re-enter and strengthened the windows. To keep people from accessing the rear and lawn, a new fence was even constructed, when they were done, 
The house was reinforced in addition to being secure, Vernon stood at the doorway, surveying his house that he had taken back, I couldn't have done this without you, he said, expressing his gratitude to Jake and his group for their help, I sincerely appreciate it, Jake gave him a quick pat on the shoulder and said, Vernon, any time, the difficult portion was completed by you. Just be careful not to get hurt, Vernon opted to remain in his car parked in front of the home while everyone departed, fearing that anything may happen if he looked away, nervous, he kept a close eye on the land, he made the decision to go inside for the first time since coming back at the crack of morning and made himself a lovely cup of coffee, knowing that the battle was far from finished, he sipped the warm drink and got ready for the next part of his strategy. Vernon sat in a chair by the window and watched the street as the sun rose higher in the sky. He knew the squatters would try to re-enter the residence and expected them to return, soon after, he saw them returning, their faces innocent and composed, as they got closer, his heart was thumping with excitement, anticipating to return with a waltz as if nothing had happened, their initial reaction upon seeing the new fence was one of disbelief, they looked at each other, bewildered, and then tried to climb over it, watching them struggle, their aggravation growing with every second, gave Vernon a rush of satisfaction, their faces changed from irritation to shock as they got closer to the front door and attempted to open it with their old keys only to discover the new locks were securely fastened, their bewilderment gave way to rage, Vernon stared from inside, a smug smile developing across his lips, as they started hammering on the door and shouting threats and insults. It was time for the last performance, reaching for his phone, he dialed the cops, the cops moved quickly to the scene, surprising the squatters by stepping aside. Vernon walked outside as the police got closer to the door and declared, these people have been trespassing on my property, with authority, in defiance, the squatters yelled, no, we have the lease papers, here is where we reside, the officers turned to face them, clearly apprehensive now, but still furious. One of the officers questioned, do you have any legal right to be here, the squatter stumbled and held out their fictitious lease, hoping the cops would take their side but Vernon produced his official and unambiguous ownership documents, dispelling any possibility of confusion, the squatters recognized that the cards had been flipped, when Vernon got the same response he had previously, he was ecstatic, he has the ownership papers, so he's the rightful owner of the property. We require you to leave the property immediately, but you are free to challenge it in court if you so choose, a mix of confusion and wrath showed on the squatters' faces, I demand justice, the words we've been living here, came out of their mouths in an increasingly desperate tone, reiterating with unwavering determination, the officers threatened trespassing arrest unless the individuals in question immediately vacated the premises, as his heart raced with a mixture of joy and relief. Vernon watched on, as he watched the squatters evicted, he felt his fight had been justified, the look of shock and helplessness on their faces changed as the cops led them away from the premises, and he could see it. After the police vehicles pulled away, Vernon remained on his porch to enjoy the long-lost peace, a profound feeling of contentment and appreciation enveloped him, he had finally returned to his safe haven after a long and difficult journey, with a sigh of relief. He made his way back inside, ready to indulge in the little things he had imagined, after a hot bath, he felt a deep sense of relief as he enjoyed his pancakes, a small victory, a sign that he was finally home washed over him, after watching the stories above, do you have any thoughts, feel free to share your opinions in the comments section, if you enjoyed our video, please like, subscribe, and share our channel, that all about today's stories, see you next time.